Hello, everyone. I wanted to review the module one study questions. Um, I do not uh, comment on uh, individual question submissions. Uh, rather, I make videos like this in which I say what I had in mind in the question, just sketch out a, the kind of answer I was looking for. And so what you should be doing is looking at these videos and seeing whether your responses more or less jibe with what I had in mind, um, <clears throat> and that's how it's done. Um, the module one study questions are fairly open-ended, so I don't think there's any, you know, uh, uh, what I'm looking for here is not any specific answer. Rather, I'm looking for an answer that would be an answer that reflected an understanding, perhaps a personal understanding, and familiarity with the material. <laughs> For instance, uh, Aria number one, Aria's fencing master has a certain view of death. How would you describe it? Obviously, referring to the clip from Game of Thrones, how would you describe it? I don't know. I just all sorts of answers to that. I mean, I think of it as just really interesting because what it reflects is a person's view of life and the first person's view of the world in which death is the greatest power. Um, and I think that, you know, as I said in the video, what was really interesting about that show when it was good um, was it kind of did a world building thing and, and it slowly developed. And it was clear that these people in this imaginary culture, this imaginary place, uh, had religious views, but they had no real view of an afterlife. Um, they believed, as many people do, obviously, that death is the absolute end of the person. And so death was this force. In, in such a conception, you could see why death might be considered a kind of a god. That's what the fencing master says, is that there is only one god, and his name is death. And, and that, that makes a, a lot of sense in a certain way, right? Because if you think of what is the divine, the divine is that which has absolute power and power over you, and that you simply must acknowledge as being the major force in the universe, certainly under a certain conception uh, in which, you know, we don't have the traditional God or gods of <clears throat> different world religions, but, but um, a more, I don't know, uh, a view of, of life in which life is absolutely ended by death. Death could be seen as the, as the, the greatest power there is. Number two, how would you describe the characterization of human death in Ecclesiastes? Do you agree with it? Why or why not? Obviously, you know, open-ended question. But reading Ecclesiastes is a real interesting experience for anybody who's uh, familiar in any way with, uh, with the Bible, Old Testament book, that, you know, uh, it's one of the books of the Old Testament. So uh, Christian people, Jewish people, and Muslim people, too, uh, consider it as having great value. Um, but it more or less says that our lives are over at death. Uh, and in this, this section that I, I gave you, this brief section, strongly suggests that we die no differently than the animals. And that it's a certain amount of presumption to think that our spirits go upwards to heaven while theirs go down to the dirt. Uh, we don't seem to be any different from them. So why would, would we think that our fate upon death would be different? Um, so... I don't know if it really reflected in that brief quote that I gave you, but this this view of Ecclesiastes again, where where death is just you know wipes out the person, is one more reason for the preacher to say all is vanity, all is meaningless, because death uh, makes he threatens to make life meaningless. Again, but that's really open ended. Second question. Number three, I, I did have something specific in mind, explain why Dunn's poem is a Christian view of death. It's, it's not all that important, really. Um, but I have a pet peeve of that poem, because I think it's probably my favorite poem ever written. I mean, what you consider to be your the great, great poetry is such a personal thing. Uh, but the Death Be Not Proud sonnet, uh, to me, is clearly one of the greatest poem, poems ever written in, in the English language. You know, I mean, I, my familiarity is really, unfortunately, only with English. But explain why Dunn's poem is a Christian view of death. My pet peeve is that uh, when people do quote it, they quote just the first four lines, uh, the death be not proud, 
though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. For those, those whom thou thinkst thou dost overthrow die not, poor death, nor yet canst thou kill me. But then they, they don't refer to the rest of it. Um, it's a Christian view of death because that sort of almost mocking death at the beginning, that death, you, you, you can't kill me. You're powerless over me. It only makes sense in a Christian con- in the Christian con- in the Christian context of Dunn's, the rest of Dunn's poem, in which he says is refers to the resurrection. You know, one short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. It, it really is probably the the greatest, I think, expression of the Christian idea of of uh, victory over death. Christ is the victor over death, and death is really was the human being's great enemy, but but. Christianity, the appearance of Jesus, marks this occasion in which death is defeated. Death shall be no more. So it, it only makes, it is a Christian poem. And you probably wouldn't really know that from the first few lines. That's why you got to read the whole thing. So anyway, these, these questions really, again, there's no really right answer here. There's answers that are more or less well-informed. So when you come at the end of the course, to take the final exam and write these essay questions, uh, the kind of, you know, you, you'll, you just need to know the texts um, so that uh, you're able to write about them in an informed and fluent way.